before you switch from Windows to Mac, there are a few things that you should know. So I've been using Windows all of my life and I recently switched to the MacBook Pro about a month ago. And I was surprised about some features that a MacBook had that Windows didn't and some that Windows had that a MacBook didn't. So let's talk about it. So the build quality of the MacBook is really impressive because Apple is the only manufacturer that makes the Mac. They can closely control how the Mac is built and the build feels really solid. This is a 2017 MacBook Air that has been through some intense use and the occasional abuse and it still works. There are also some very cool design choices that Apple has made with the MacBook that takes it, in my opinion, a step above the average Windows PC. Like the cutting at the bottom that lets you open the lid with just one finger. That's a big flex. The unibody aluminum design. And now even the rounded edges. It is tough to get all these features in a Windows PC and the closest I've come to getting a comparable build is with my current PC, the Lenovo Yoga. And even with that, there are some things that feels a bit off. So for build quality, I have to give it to the Mac. The trackpad on the Mac doesn't actually depress. It gives you a tactile response when you apply pressure, just like the home button on the iPhone 7. So this means you can do things like force click and even customize how much pressure activates the response. Now I know some newer Windows PC have started implementing this, but just not as smoothly as the Mac has. And I've used a lot of trackpad and I can say without a doubt, Mac takes this. If we overlook the fact that command is control, options is alt, then you're left with an extra control key that doesn't seem to have a function. Now the absence of a backspace key means that the delete key acts like a backspace and deletes to the left. You have to hold the function key for the delete to work like a delete. It's also a grease magnet, so if your fingers are moisturized, prepare to have your keyboard moisturized as well. For, for keyboard, I have to give it to Windows here. The keyboard experience is slightly better on my Yoga PC. For display, I think it's a draw between Mac and PC. Now hear me out. For Mac, the display is clean, it's sharp, Liquid Retina is really good and there is system-wide color management. But in PC, there's OLED and some windows even have uh, an anti-glare coating. So it's a draw for me. Now when it comes to sound, however, it's a different story. The speakers on the Mac is banging. I usually prefer to use headphones on my windows, but lately I've been using the speakers on my Mac and that's how good they are. So hands down, sound goes to Mac and display, it's a draw. For people already in the Apple ecosystem, it is hard to beat the Mac. The seamless integration between using a Mac, an iPhone and an iPad is incredible. You know, you can start a task on one device and finish it on another. You can send messages from your Mac, have it update on your other devices in real time. There's iCloud Sync and, you know, answering calls and FaceTime on your Mac is a really good feature. On Windows, there is no easy way to fully replicate this functionality, so it's an easy win for the Mac. Now, this one is a bit harder to pick a winner. Let me explain. So, there are some things that Windows do well that the Mac doesn't and vice versa. Take window management for an example. When you minimize multiple windows of the same app, by default, each window takes up its own space in the dock on the Mac. You can change this behavior in the settings, but it will make it harder for you to find the exact window you're looking for because there is no preview on hover on the Mac. Windows does this by default. Another thing is installing and uninstalling apps. So there are two ways to install an app on Windows. You can go through the Windows Store or you can download an executable file, an .exe file. 
both ways will walk you through a prompt that feels very 1999, where you can choose other preferences you'd like. On the Mac, there are three ways. You can use Brew, that's going through the terminal. You can download a .pkg or .dmg file from the manufacturer website, or you can go through the App Store. I go through my options in that order. But whichever method you choose, the installation process feels smoother than that on Windows. Some people may like the added configuration you can make on Windows, but I prefer the experience on a Mac. Now, this is a big one. Since Mac OS is based on Unix, which is known for its strong security and stability, and the fact that over 90% of malware is targeted at Windows, Mac OS is the safer route. But Windows has come a long way and they've made some really good improvements to beef up security with things like Defender, Firewall, and even newer systems have BitLocker now. So you're not just exposed to the wild with Windows. I have actually never gotten a virus or a malware on my Windows PC. So I think ultimately your choice and how you browse the web plays a big part into how secure your system is. Or if you're going for the safest route, I think Mac takes this. Yeah. That depends. If you value design, build quality, and seamless integration with other Apple products, a MacBook is definitely the perfect choice for you. But if you want more versatility, a wide range of software compatibility, and more bang for your buck, then a Windows laptop is probably the way to go. Now, I've been using this MacBook for about a month now as my primary device, and I am slowly getting over those weird, quirky things that make it different from Windows that I've used most of my life. And it is starting to grow on me. So if you're considering switching to a Mac, this is the sign you've been waiting for. Chances are, you like it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.